when was it? I think it was about last year in, I want to say, well, late last year. Let's just say late last year. Um, my friend had a near-death experience. I won't go into details of how or what happened to him, but he's okay now. But um, it was his first ever near-death experience. And he was going through shock about it, and he was really, uh, tra- like, he was getting, like, almost like, uh, you know, it was heavy. It was a big trauma. It was a big traumatic moment in his life. That's what I was looking for. And um, he had never been through that before. And uh, I, you know, I tried to help him as much as I could, try to talk with him, try to get through it, try to get through these feelings of, like, you know, he, he, he felt scared about doing that the activity or doing the activity again, you know, uh, that he was partaking in that led him to the near-death experience. And, you know, I just try to help him, try to help him. And eventually now, these days, I think it's, uh, I think he's okay for, you know, he's, even though, like, it's not the biggest thing on his mind. I mean, it's always going to be in the back of his head. He took it really harshly, right? And, um, but he's, he's good. He's good. But these days, well, right after that time, I kind of started thinking to myself, do, do I have a near death experience? And, um, how did it affect me? And for a little bit, I was like, I don't really have one. You know, I don't really have one. And I don't, I can't recall a moment where I was like, so shocked to the, to the way he was. And then it clicked to me that I said I actually do have one and it happened to me in 2010 I was 17 and I didn't realize until after talking to my friend how much it had affected my entire life yeah so this is a very I think it's a kind of a long story, so I try to make it as short as possible. But it was 2010. I was doing. I had a subject in school. 2010 was my last year of school. I had a subject that was called construction. And for this class, in order to pass and to graduate, you needed to complete two weeks of uh, work experience. So one week at one place one week at one construction place and another week at another construction place and um i'm i'm think it's like around i want to say maybe like the second term so maybe around may till july around there was when i was appointed to go to a hospital and funny enough the hospital that i was born in which is it literally just hit my head just now that's fucking weird, but um, the liter- the, yeah, the the hospital that I was born in was like building another section of like just to make it bigger, you know, just to just to create more rooms or something, you know. It was just a whole other like may- maybe like another block just dedicated to the hospital. Yeah, I had to start my week there, and it started off, you know, look like as a kid. You don't want to wake up 6 a.m. in the morning just to take a bus to get to to get to work. It's it was insane how how early I had to wake up because my start time was at seven, all the way to three, which was like entirely just like ugh, like so such a shock to the system. But I started, you know, I started in the first day. Um, it was a bit of weird first day as I'm remembering now. I had to get there. I had to sort of sign in and, and do an induction about the the area. And I met um, my mentor. I forgot. There was an actual name for it. I guess my supervisor. Let's call him supervisor. I met him. And, uh, you know, he he said that he would only, only be taking me on for two days. And the other three days of the week, of the business week or the school week, uh, someone else would. Um, and so the first day, you know, 
I, I I barely remember it, but I just had to do like little things, not really anything too too stressful or too construction like. You're literally there just to spend time there, just so you, you can get the hours, just so that you can prove that you spent a week there in order to graduate, right? And um, first day, it goes off, it, it goes, you know. Second day, you know, and it's just like again, six a.m. Gotta go to this, this, do this thing, and it's 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 awful, you know. And I hated it, but I was like, oh, I gotta do it, gotta do it. It's like, and then it, when I was like starting that, I was like, I guess this is what work really is, you know. I guess this is what it's like after school. And like thoughts of like my future really crept in, and I was like, man, I got to go to university to do something. But at this point, I wasn't even thinking about university because I was like, I'm just, I don't know what to do. I'm not good at any subject. There's nothing that I really like doing. Um, yeah. I just didn't know but second day goes whatever I don't remember when it happened but it was either the third I'm pretty sure it was the third day the third or the fourth day I'm, I'm getting like little jobs here and there to do around the construction site I don't really talk to anyone I don't uh, really um, interact with anyone I'm doing jobs that are just like you know you don't need anyone to help you but then there was this one job where I had to transfer. They were doing checks on the fire extinguishers around the construction site. And apparently they had all these fire extinguishers like checked on the ground floor. And so this place was like multi-story, right? And so each, each floor was probably should have had like three fire extinguishers. And um, I had to take the fire extinguishers that were checked and bring them back to their places amongst the building, right? And like, I, I do, I think I do some of them and then ultimately, you know, I grab one and I have to go up. And on the side of the, of the, at the edge of the building that they were constructing, constructing, there was this um, stairway that was like ramps. So it was like this and then it would go up up oh it's like this up 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 and it was just still just still ramping like ramps um i want to i want to i want to see if i can like compare it to something there should be a picture here i should be showing you you know it's better than just a picture an actual video this is literally two days ago or yesterday actually uh, it, the 3rd of March they're building another section for the hospital that I was that I'm talking about right now it literally looked like this where it was just like through like stories and each story there on the side there there was like a, a stairway and it literally looked like that um, yeah so that's exactly what it looked like when I was working there just on the other side of this building so yeah it was pretty cool. Didn't expect it, but back to the video. And I remember, like, I was carrying this fire extinguisher. It was kind of heavy because I was, like, 17 and I, I didn't work out or anything. So this was actually, like, pretty heavy lifting for me. So I'm, like, carrying this thing, carrying this thing. And I was, like, oh, i got to go up. And, like, there were lifts. There was a lift, right? But the lift was, like, on the other side of the building. I didn't want to carry it over there. So I was like, I'll just take the stairway up and it should be like right here. I, I was taking it to like the third level or something. And uh, I walk, I, I walk up to it. I like carry the, the fire, I'm carrying this fire thing. Like I'm lunging this thing around. And suddenly, like I'm about to go up, right? So there's this and then there's that and then there's like this little piece there where it's like you can stand in and it's just like the level it's just it's just a flat piece of like steel right and i'm carrying this fire extinguisher and out of nowhere i just fall i just go Phew! and all you hear is bang it was so fast that i didn't know exactly what happened but i remember my heart just dropping out of my 
anus. I was like, I was so shell shocked. I didn't know what happened, right? And so, because like the, the, the bang came from the fire extinguisher hitting the steel ramp. And for some reason, I'm just like, I, I didn't know what to do. So like all I could, all, all I, at that moment, what, what I felt was like, I fell. I felt that I had, fa- I was falling into nothing. Seriously, I felt I, like I thought I was gone. I thought I was like, it's that's it. <laughs> Holy shit, where am I going? And then I looked down, and there's like a triangle, or like a like a very small like piece of just just a hole that's in within like these ramps that they haven't like covered up or like you know put anything over it there's nothing and my leg was basically like so that's the ramp yeah and my leg was just like dangling like that and um i looked down and it's just like three two stories of just like steel bars the ramp and then just steel bars like the ones that are supporting the ramp and you know i was like okay Woo. okay so so like i was only saved because like i couldn't fit through the hole maybe if both my feet had like fell into the hole there could have been a possibility i think maybe the fire extinguisher could have saved me if that is that in that situation but i'm glad i don't have to know that right but so i just push i push off the fire extinguisher i pull myself out and i genuinely have a moment just sitting there just like i'm like looking around no one's around like i'm alone i don't know how i'm so alone in this very moment it's like it's pretty weird and i was like okay uh that happened let's move on and so i i i, I continued and i continued to, to I, I finished the two days and even though at the time it didn't really seem like the biggest thing like i was like oh i survived I'm cool i didn't realize that i had so much shock waiting for me after it the shock I didn't think I, <laughs> at the time it felt like I didn't have any, you know, I went back to school, I went, you know, I talked to my friends about the, the thing and I actually sort of like told other people my story and, you know, they were like, whoa, that's crazy. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it was whatever, what, it was whatever, you know, it was just construction, I was just work. But before that moment, before I fell into the hole, um, school was very confusing to me my, yeah my school days were always so confusing because you do so many subjects and you know you have so many op- it's, it's like you have so many options but for me I just didn't know what to pursue I didn't know what to do so um, I chose construction because it was like I mean it's just an easy thing you know I'm probably going to end up being a builder whatever the fuck because everyone else does because i'm not that smart and i'm not that like i don't like studying so i can't study for anything that needs like a really high score to get into for university so i'm i think i'm going to be a builder so i might as well learn something now right but i remember the days after and maybe the weeks after um, the incident the the fall the whole i would be in class and i would be like bored or like i was wasting my time suddenly like that moment would hit me it would like replay in my head and my imagination like sort of like play like plays with the memory a bit so it was almost it almost like for me it almost felt like i was this close to going like falling down to hell you know as a young mind you know you can sort of like come up with different ways to sort of uh um what's the word like deal with it death was waiting for me down there it was like looking up and it was like almost just come down just, just, just fall you know and that sort of like 
that memory you know, would just like pop up every now and then when I was at school or doing things that I didn't want to do and it, came, it became very apparent that now thinking back at it that I was that 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 moment that fall was very much such a psychological change for me and only now can I really realize the after effects that it had on me as I ret- like as look let's get back so as I returned to construction class specifically construction class right instead of being you know usually in those classes I'd be very sort of lazy and very uh, what's the word I use lost and very aloof you know after the after the whole I began to feel very disgusted very just like I would look at myself or I would like look at myself from like a, like like an out of body experience and look at myself sitting at that table doing nothing and being like why did you choose to waste so much time why why did you choose to waste so much time in this stupid class when there were other things that you could have been doing that you could have been learning that you really want to learn but for some reason you, you're not allowing yourself to learn them and there's very there's various reasons because you know i didn't want to seem like i was a bitch i didn't want to seem like i was um what's it called like you know i wanted to you know my, my family make them proud by doing something that's sort of in the work force area thingamajig like you know learning in order to get to something in the future because i knew i probably wasn't gonna go to university so i had to do something after right and then shortly after like that feeling went to every class and eventually school as a whole and only now i can realize that i was so bored in school I was so like I hated school. I hated the fact that we had to be in this class doing nothing for like, hours, or separate classes doing nothing for hours. It, the moment really leads to my 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 pursuit of a creative life. Yeah. So I had an epiphany after my near death experience, my desire to live rose whereas my desire to learn uh, plummeted I re- I realized that the whole and almost like having this sort of and having this like near-death experience was the exact moment where the true beginning of my creative pursuit of purpose and life really began where i really wanted to do something with my life other than just going to construction other than just like having a nine like you know a cushy nine to five like you know i wanted something to make me feel something i wanted something to make me feel i'm living towards something like i'm doing something important with my with my with my get my time that i've been like given on this earth you know i didn't want to be looking at a screen for hours i didn't want to be in a cheap suit and having and like you know recycling through like five shirts a week like i didn't want to break my back for bricks and steel and i didn't want to be pushing reports and receipts like no like no like you know and every now and then i just like whenever like and like as i was getting close to graduating it was it felt even more and more pressure to like be like i i don't want to do any of this stuff and i don't know what to do but i don't want to do any of it i don't know i think oh i think since that since the whole for a couple years i felt like i was on borrowed time like i was so close you know i was so i felt so close to death i needed to do something with the time that i do have now you know, but not only did it give me the pursuit of wanting a creative life, or I guess that something like that, it got it also gave me the stress, right? Failure. So in these like ten years, or thirteen years, I guess, failures have felt harder. They feel deeper, and every failure in my life 
after that has felt, has made me feel closer to getting to that unfulfilling life you know it's like a, a, it's like I'm in a war and I'm losing the battle constantly because I'm failing I'm not getting this internship I'm not getting any followers like I'm not you know I'm not like I don't have connections like I you know I graduated college and like nothing came from it so every failure since then has been so hard to deal with and so stressful and you know it, it, it was at a point where I was like oh man like is it just a dream is it just you know is this the big fail do I just like let it go this like creative pursuit you know do I just like not paint do I just not write do I just not make stuff you know because it's not gonna get me paid and I'm damn near 30 now and I gotta get a move on with my life you know I gotta do stuff I gotta you know get money and 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 be quote unquote an adult and I have to you know I have to sacrifice in order to I have to sacrifice what I want in order to get what I need in this in this world and it was very close to becoming I was very close to sort of just like packing it up and just you know studying something else and uh trying to get you know to that to trying to get something for myself you know because i was so stressed out with being creative because it wasn't working and um right now it is not 2010 but it is 2023 and i'm at a job that's not creatively fulfilling right i'm doing something that's not what i like i'm not doing anything i'm not really doing i'm not really at a position where i can say i'm living creatively or living off my creativity i'm not i'm not at that point right and i was and i'm and i was very close to giving up until i watched him collapse in front of me (laughs) 